This is the unboxing of a Skywatcher DS Pro 120 Apochromatic Refractor tel Telescope. Uh, these are becoming rare now due to the coronavirus and the crisis in the transport and China being almost, you know, in the situation of shutdown. Importers are not able to satisfy the needs of the market. So we are in a situation that there is not a supply as much as it used to be. There is yet demand because people are in their homes. They want to buy something. And there are long queues for apochromatic telescopes now. Long waiting lists for suppliers, in Britain at least, as far as I know. So finding second hand is a good thing if you can find it. I was lucky. I found the apochromatic. Let's unbox it and see. Okay, let's see what is inside. Okay. Uh, the box is a large aluminium box, more than one meter wide. It has a sturdy handle you can carry easily. Four latches, as you can see. All of them have uh, locks, so you can lock them. I hope there is a key inside. Oh, look at it. Fully foamed, packed. This is the actual telescope. Lovely, strong. Uh, dovetail. This is the telescope. This is the yeah finder scope. Complete With all the things. Just let me see. How is the lens? Yeah, the lens is looking all right. So far, so good. It has a star diagonal. I was sprayed on it. So it's dirty, I have to clean it. It's clean because there's no cap on it. Uh, one 28mm eyepiece. The bottom part of it is missing. I have to get that. What is this? Oh, reduce the corrector. E for ED 120. That's the sky watch you want. 200 pounds, that's it. Nice on. Yeah, four keys. And the main part is this telescope itself. It has a dual speed Crayford focuser, tube rings, and the cap. Let me just remove the cap. Have a look. To the mirror, to the lens. Fully darkened. Uh, minimal cleaning probably it needs, but usually you can just use it as it is. And it has, according to this, it has a famous shot glass. So, uh, contains shot optical glass, the quality, that's the reason. It is a doublet, of course, one. Uh, shot glass the other one which is the outer glass is a different uh, glass both of them work as a apochromatic so this is practically an apochromatic and because the focal lens is 900 millimeter this can be easily used for a, as a planetary telescope at the same time with the reducer you can make it to uh, I think 6.37 F ratio, so you can use it for astrophotography. That field flattener uh, reducer gives you a good field of the uh, flat field of view for astrophotography because when you're watching, when you're observing, the image that falls on your uh, retina in the eye is a, as in a curve, curved surface of your eyeball. But the CCD chip of a camera or film if you are using all this time is a flat surface so you need to actually make the field of view flat and you do this by this otherwise you end up with the stars which are not really perfectly shaped so we just take the telescope out have a look 
Skywatcher. Beautiful shot glass DS Pro. Everything as far as I can see is all right. This is a shoe um, shoe holder for the finder. And this is really good quality. Uh, Vixen dovetail. That's the upper focus. That's the dual speed focuser, as you can see. Yeah, I'm happy that I got this. And this is called Di Black Diamond. Black is black, but at the same time it has glitter. So beautiful, lovely telescope, apochromatic, and we'll be using it for planetary observations and even astrophotography with that field flattener. You can use it for that. So all in all, this is ready for astrophotography. I have to find the attachment for here so we can actually attach the diagonal to it. Mm. And uh, there is also missing there. So anyway, uh, that's will be something solved. The sky watcher and yeah, will be used. Yeah, I will just test it in the daylight at the moment. Uh, I have to get the attachments for this. Okay, this is the Sky Watcher DS Pro uh, Apochromatic uh, Telescope. It's a doublet, and uh, the diameter of the objective is 120 millimeters, so around 5 inch, and focal length is 900 millimeter. That means the F ratio is 7.5. 7 yeah, it's quite large but manageable yet. Let me just show what I'm looking at. Uh, we are looking at the this tree with some footlets. This is the lens as much as I can show. I've attached the attachment, necessary attachment to change it from astrophotography setting to visual setting. This is the attachment and this is the star diagonal I cleaned it and this is the max vision 28 millimeter 68 degrees field of view IPS and let's see how it looks So that was the view to the uh, telescope. Uh, the blue patch you could see was because of the lens of the camera, the hallway camera, mixed with this lens at the corner you could see something. But when you visually observe, there is no effect, no blue color or anything. So I'm really delighted with this telescope. It's a real chromat. For the price is a is a bargain. Cannot be cheaper than this. Especially with the dual speed focuser. And all the accessories which comes with it. Now we were looking at those foots there. Twelve to fifteen meter away. This is the OVL uh, Sky T two uh, altazimuth mount uh, which you can actually install on it up to three telescopes uh, one here on one arm the smaller one on the top arm and if you don't use this uh, counterweight you can use I have an ADM another ADM clamp you can use 
either small or bigger the same size as that or Newtonian or a fractor so practically you can put three telescopes on this mount and at the moment as you can see I have uh, two on this and uh, because tonight will be clear hopefully as you can see the sky is blue so we can actually see I'm going to observe the planet Jupiter and Saturn these are the refractors this is the refractor Sky Watcher ED120 DS Pro and this is also Sky Watcher EO Star 72 ED both of them have shot glass in them this is the famous brand of the apochromatic glass that they use fluorite uh, in the glass and that makes it really good for you know chrom um, aberration free no chromatic aberration or anything so I'm looking forward to use this and observe the planet Jupiter and Saturn and see what we can see you know maybe some deep sky object because this is really wide angle I really enjoy this and uh, this is also a Sky Watcher 28 millimeter a multi coated eyepiece which I will be using. Uh, I used it to adjust this uh, viewfinder, and I like the way that it is because I, I don't want those look through ones, I like this one which are right angled ones. So, looking forward to that. And I have adjusted this and the finder and this telescope all they are now aligned in the same direction They are parallel to each other in every way So that means that you can observe the same object in this Finding the fi finder scope of course observe it in this and observe it in that Or if I want I can observe something else with that I have to just change the direction of that Be independent there are Schools here, you can actually make it independent. And unlike other months, like uh, I don't know, Rowan AZ75, uh, this mount has a slow motion control, which is a bonus. Uh, anything with this slow motion control in this uh, uh, range, mechanical range will be around more than 1000 pounds so you can have this for around 200 300 pounds maximum really good value and china has made it really good value i think this is one of the best mounts everybody can buy ultra zenith mount of course you can add uh, something to make it you know go to you can add those kind of azc go to sync from skywatcher has it you can just adjust that but I don't need that. The convenience of using the Altazimut is the reason I'm going for this. Altazimut ones are really easy to set up, easy to look at uh, the objects without, you know, hassle. What a beautiful scene. The moon is shining and uh, brightening up the cloud and you can see the Jupiter also at 2 o'clock sometimes shining and now I'm looking through the uh, SV Boni Aspheric uh, 23 millimeter eyepiece and the telescope again is the Skull Watcher ED 120 refractor telescope
This is Takahashi LE 18mm. The image quality is as good as the orthoscopic. That's the moon through the skywatch with sixteen millimeter in the one. Television neck there, seven millimeter. Through the sky watch ED one hundred twenty. I'm holding the camera by hand. And you see sometimes it goes foggy and unclear autofocus is because camera is leaning on the rubber eye guard and rubber eye guard goes down and up it's very flexible you cannot read you know rest it on the rubber eye guard and tonight we have a clear sky and i'm going to observe the planet venus and jupiter Nirvana, 7 millimeter. Yeah, I'm looking at the planet Jupiter. I have found the Venus. I looked at it. It's near getting there, near the gibbous phase. And the planet Jupiter, which is there. It's very clear with this Skull Watcher 120ED. Nice, clear view. Now with the star guide uh, eight millimeter ED. Nice combination. And I can see Io which is very close to the limb of the planet Jupiter. At the same time I think I can see the shadow of it tiny clear. Is it drawn by a <laughs> pencil, sharp pencil tip? Uh, is visible beside it. It's amazing. This telescope and this all this combination are excellent. Oh, hallelujah! This is one of those exceptional knives that I can use the Nirvana four millimeter, eighty-two degrees eyepiece, and I can see clearly the disc of the IO and uh, the. It is very tiny, of course, pin head. And also the shadow of it on the Jupiter. This is one of those very ex excellent, rare nights that the atmospheric conditions are so clear. We are ahead of a frost, so we expect tomorrow night to have some snow. So. It's very clear weather coming from the North Pole. It means it is a high pressure 
and atmospheric inversion in that sense. Uh, I can say this is the night that this 4mm Nirvana really shines, it comes to its best use. And uh, I'm really happy now that I have this now to have a look. If I didn't have it, I'll have to go for something like 7mm Nirvana and borrow it, which will give, give us a similar result. Clearly see tiny discs as a Ganymede, a uh, Callisto and a uh, kind of bluish white of the Europa. Uh, of course, atmospheric dispersion causes this to a little bit sometimes elongated, but uh, you can see that it's not a star, it has a disk. It has a planetary, it is a planetary body. So after using these EDI pieces, I came to the conclusion, this is my conclusion. The Star uh, Guider ED eyepieces uh, are perfect eyepiece for using with refractors 60 degrees field of view nice and clarity excellent contrast excellent light scatter well controlled you don't see any halo around the bright objects like jupiter or venus and uh, perfect for ref uh, refractor telescopes but if you want to use it on a dobsonia no i don't think that is the perfect choice it's better to have a wider field of view angular wise so it's better to have something like 70 degrees or 80 degrees 100 degrees 110 degrees of course you can use it and uh, i've not tried it myself but uh, um, with the refractor i feel that is really good with the reflector i may eventually try it but at the moment i don't feel that the field of view uh, is big enough to avoid the nudging, constant nudging of the tube of the Dobsonia. Oh, what an excellent eyepiece is this 26mm uh, meat plusle. That's a lovely eyepiece, sharp. I'm looking at the M42 Great Orion Nebula, it's so beautiful. This is the Orion Nebula with the meat 26mm super plus eyepiece. The artifact to the left, what you see is a reflection from the street light. Very close to this uh, nebula it was. And it's beautiful. The moon is now rising. Over my telescope. And it was very cold, so I just took a shot with the 26mm eyepiece from the moon. It was a full moon, so there was not much shadows. And then I went in because I didn't want to catch cold. It was a beautiful session. I really enjoyed it. All the eyepieces I use, I'm really enjoying them. I love them from the simplest one to the best, uh, you know, uh, technically advanced one, optically advanced one. And I finished this video by telling how much I admire the Huawei P30 Pro mobile phone camera. This is the best camera I've ever seen. I don't know any other camera as good as this one. Uh, of course, many all these images you saw here were handheld, but the camera is excellent. You can see the Orion Nebula at the same Orion constellation at the same time. My telescope, very nice capture. Repairing loose Crayford focusers. Crayford focusers are an invention that was made by someone uh, called Crayford in South London somewhere. Uh, it's a very basic uh, kind of, you know, uh, focuser, inferior to the rack and pinion. That's the reason many of them actually have this problem. When you add a little bit of weight to them, they just budge into it. The friction is not enough to hold them. And what you will end up is that uh, you lose focus, even you uh, think the whole thing may come off. So what's the solution for that? I had done uh, a lot of things, adding duct tape, going to you know remove material from the surfaces that are in contact in the focuser. 
none of them works. But finally I came to one final solution and that was something that everybody was telling me to avoid and that is to tighten up the screws there underneath the focuser and I did that for this uh, Skywatch ED80 Pro series uh, gold version and it worked it's not a, a dual Crayford focuser it's a single one and it repaired it I can add any weight on this at the moment I will not, of course, risk it to put a one and a half kilo one, but I've done it in the past on this one. <laughs> but anyway, it works now. And uh, the next telescope that I use on this is a, a Skowatch ED120. And it again had this problem, f uh, uh, 7.5 uh, focal ratio. And this had a really bad problem. It has a dual uh, Crayford focuser and it was a slipping, loose, it was loose, completely coming down. I didn't go to remove material by filing the iron, the, the contacting metals, and I added some uh, duct tape. It didn't really work, uh, it was just not very good. So I went again and did this finally at the same time as that previous one. Tightened up the Allen wrench uh, with the Allen wrench, the uh, screws there, Allen screws there. And it works now perfect can hold the focus and uh, I don't know why it, but they were telling you uh, in the forums and everywhere to don't do this it will just damage it you know every time as as far as I've used it it's not, it doesn't have any problem it just moves smoothly of course I prefer a rack and pinion this Crayford focuser is another stingy way you know is <laughs> invented here uh, to make it Focus is cheap, rack and pino is more expensive, but that works now. Even at a steep angle like this, when I was observing the or, um, Andromeda M31 galaxy, uh, and I could uh, go there, it was the angle of this telescope at that time was around 65 to 70 degrees from the horizontal, and I could easily, you know, have the eyepiece there and just observe two telescopes on this. Um, Sky T2, no problem at all. Beautiful shot also, I was able to take it look like a spaceship. And that was the solution for me. It has worked so far, no problem at all.